welcome back to the reflections we were talking about the mount of olives where jesus took the disciples and they all prayed there the mount of olives i would like you to imagine there are two hills or two areas facing almost each other separated by what is called the kidron valley if you stand on the mount of olives you can see jerusalem completely in the same way you stand in jerusalem practically anywhere and you can see the mount of olives so the two hills facing each other with a separation by the kedron valley kedron valley when it rains there will be water flowing but after some time the water will stop you can just wade across so it's not a very difficult thing the mount of olives got the name because of the olive trees that are very famous and scientists have studied the existing old trees and many of them are more than 2000 years old in other words those trees olive trees were there at the time of jesus agony olive tree it seems does not die you cut it it will sprout again sometimes it may dry up but it will start sprouting again so it never dies as such so that there are trees as old as 2000 years is nothing miraculous it is normal olive is something that is so uh, common all over that area especially the holy land the olive fruit you can just eat the nut produces oil then that olive oil is used for not only cooking also for massaging on the body and so on and olive oil has some antiseptic power that's why it could be applied to any wound and so various uses for the olive such olive trees are all over that mount of olives and the kernel of the olive fruit is nothing very special but uh, something healthy it is almost like our gooseberry you eat the outer part and then inside there will be a nut so that is more or less the way uh, olive is in our country there are people who have tried to grow olive but does not grow in the way it grows there such a hill under those olive trees jesus prayed jesus prayed he knelt and at one stage he sweated blood and he prayed father if it is possible take this cup of suffering from me yet not what i want but what you want that prayer that has become so famous and that prayer shows jesus was really in agony he suffered so much the rock on which jesus said this prayer and sweat blood is preserved in a church called the church of all nations right in front of the main altar that rock is there still and all those who go there really see that the rock is surrounded by a, a crown of thorns made of iron so that the rock is not disturbed and it is really something so moving to be there kneeling at near that rock and even kissing that rock later perhaps i will show you a picture of that rock and what is important is to note that that is where jesus started his real suffering with the agony after that agony after that suffering the arrest takes place the arrest took place at around 10 o'clock judas betrayed him and 
there was the arrest. There was some reaction from the disciples, but it was not much and did not take much time. But then the arrest took place and all the disciples practi practically ran away. And Jesus was led to the temple premises. The temple is in Jerusalem itself. They had to cross the Kidron Valley, go across and enter the walled city of Jerusalem, for which they had to also take a round actually. From one, one side, you cannot enter the city because it's, the wall is too high. So almost they make a round of that wall and they enter. As they enter, Jesus is first taken to the house of Annas and then from there to the house of Caiaphas. Caiaphas was the high priest. Maybe some thought Annas is still in power, but Annas was uh, a great person. So first he was taken to Annas and then to Caiaphas. Caiaphas calls the full Sanhedrin. That means the full court, so to say. That includes the high priest, chief priest, teachers of the law, and elders. All of them were called together to discuss about what to do with Jesus. And one question that the high priest asked Jesus was, are you the Messiah? And Jesus in a way said, yes. Then they decided that he should die. But then they had no power to pass a judgment of death. They only did some uh, fooling around. People spat upon Jesus, blindfolded him, slapped him, and even said, prophesy for us, Messiah. Guess who hit you? All those actions that took place there was in a way fooling Jesus, making him suffer already from that time onwards. And meanwhile, when this is happening in the house of the high priest, a servant girl tells Peter, you were also in that group. And Peter said, no. After a little while, another servant girl also tells him. And Peter says, no, I don't know him. Little while, he wanders there itself in the courtyard of the high priest. Some men tell him, you were in that group. Your, your speech itself betrays you that you are from Galilee. And when he said that one, the cock crowed. And with that, he remembered Jesus had told that before the cock crows, he will deny him three times. And he must have really wept then and there, realizing how he betrayed and made people believe that he was not with that group. So that event took place in the courtyard of the high priest. And from there, again, the trial continues. Jesus is once again taken to trial within Caiaphas' uh, house. And then he is put in chains, taken to a lockup, locked up all alone, no one to help him. The final judgment or the death sentence had to be given only the following day for two reasons. One is only the governor has the power to give a death sentence. Secondly, no trial is to take place after sunset. So for these two reasons, no trial continues. Me meanwhile, Jesus is only locked up in that one room. Where that room is exactly, we don't know. According to John, it was in the temple premises. From another 
sentence it looks he was locked up either in the house of Caiaphas or in the house of uh, Annas. So wherever it is, he was locked up, all alone, no one to help him. Early morning, Good Friday, early morning, already by six o'clock, the Sanhedrin meets. Sanhedrin means the full court or full bench of judges with all those officials, that is high priest, chief priest, teachers of the law and elders. They all meet and decide that Jesus is to be put to death. But then the actual judgment has to be passed by only the procurator, the governor. He is then taken to Pilate in chains. He is taken to Pilate and Pilate asks him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus just said, so you say, which means yes. But then Pilate also does not find enough reason to give a death sentence. And he says that. He said, I don't find any reason to put him to death. And Pilate could not actually come to a decision. People were shouting and Pilate was in a dilemma, what to do. Then he found one way of escaping that. And for that, he sent Jesus to Herod. In the house of Herod, the soldiers again mocked him and put on a red robe on him. And with all that mockery, with all that Again, foolery that is taking place in the palace of Herod. Jesus again suffered immensely. No one to support him. From there, since Herod could not do anything else, he sends him back to Pilate. So in a way, Jesus was being pushed from this place to that place. And Pilate again had to call together the Sanhedrin, the chief priests, the elders, and so on, and the trial would continue.